Hey, it's a Fort Worth Playboy. And my Playboy's Bunny. And welcome to our podcast where we discuss pickup, game, relationships. And sex, sex, sex. I miss the end. It always That's throws okay. me when you it I know. throws me when you do I know. that. No, let's do it over. <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> well, this segment is what we call story time. Story time. Where we just kind of start, we pick a subject and we talk about it. Yeah. Which is how the whole podcast started anyway. <laughs> Because we, like, we, we sure do these, talk about this shit a lot. We have these conversations all the time, all the and time. literally, I said, you know what? People could benefit from this. I think people would enjoy because we go pretty deep into some some of these conversations. Yeah. And it's really at this point, it's almost all we do. You know, is it's what we enjoy. Yeah, is the relationship and um, game and and sex and pickup and relate. You know, people that we're we're familiar with their relationships. Um, so what is your question today? Today. So I am always intrigued, I guess because I am a little higher sex drive no. as a female. No. I'm always intrigued when men who inevitably biologically are high sex drive to begin with, but they seem to become complacent as they get a little bit older uh, and married or whatnot, even in just in a, a serious relationship, become a little bit more complacent to not having sex as frequently as they would like. And that I think that can happen at 22 or 45 or 86. Like, I, I think, I don't think even age necessarily, I know that there gets to be a point where, of course, hormones and testosterone levels dip and things of that nature that hormonally are to blame that can be managed way later than most men think yeah it really is but it seems like pretty early in relationship quote unquote relationship the sex tends to wane and most guys just kind of accept it as an inevitability and i don't understand why that's okay (laughs) that's a I mean, that's a good point. If we can talk about your relationship, you know, if you're open to that. Yeah. What happened in your marriages? Did did it kind of drop off a bit? Yeah. Are you open to talking about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm okay. just wondering exactly what. Well, because I was the one. This. I was the one with the high sex drive. Yes. And he, my husband, had a high sex drive, but then it just kind of. Literally, whenever we went to get married, it was it was like after the after the vows, it was like we kind of switched roles in a way because in that way because he said, "Well, we don't have to kiss every day, and we don't have to have sex every day." And I was like, "What? Yeah, what do you, what do you mean we don't have to have sex? Every, that's literally why you marry someone is so you have someone to have sex with every day." Well, that's that's an interesting point. Is like, and I mean, I'm ha- I'm fun to have sex with. When when I was a teenager, yeah, my idea of adulthood was you had sex every night. Exactly, that's what adulthood is for. And it's kind of shocking. It's not just for paying taxes. <laughs> I mean, seriously, or, or running the t ball. My entire life, it was like, well, this is this is what it's about. That's this funny. is what makes you. When you're in a romantic relationship with someone, that means you get to have sex all the time. All the time. All over the place, wherever you want to, at right. any moment, in any moment. It's amazing. So, so I had to deal with this. But the exact opposite. The you, you, exact opposite. Yeah. But biologically, the drive is even stronger for the for Guys. the men oh, yeah. than it is even for me. Yeah. Which I'm like, I don't know how anybody gets anything done because. If Fort Worth Playboy wasn't uh, so in control of things, I'd be naked and having sex all the time. So you know, so I just have enjoy to go it. to work. We but have somebody, to earn money. we have to make money. Exactly. And not by having sex. No, not no, not with children and families and lawyers. Right. No. But um, that that bodes the question to me: Why so many men? Because I do 
I am very much of the of the mindset that men are the head of the household, men are the leaders yes, of the relationship, all of those things. So it just it blows my mind that there are men who tolerate this in their own lives. And then a lot of times they'll still marry the woman who's putting them through this already. So that's why I was wondering what your take was on this. Okay. It's it's three points. Okay. Okay. Social, physical, and the last point, she's a cunt. You know, <laughs> she's a cunt. Number one is social. Yeah. When when you're like when you're around normal guys, average guys, and you mention you're getting well, you better we're getting married. Well, you better kiss blowjobs goodbye. They're never gonna happen again. Oh. There's so much negativity. Yeah. Because I guess over time, you know, guys shit goes south. And they think everybody's going to go south. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, that it's expected. It's kind of like your body is supposed to start breaking down at 30 or 40. Right. When we know that it doesn't. No. You know? But it's social. They're like, guy, people are like, well, it's just part of being married as things are going to slow down. She's not going to be, she's so busy and she's chasing kids and this and that. And I think that literally when men are in a marriage and it's starting to slow down, they feel like that's a natural occurrence. Right. And it shouldn't be fought against. Right. It's just, you know what you hear a lot of? It's just the way it is. It's even presented that way in like sitcoms. Uh You know, the guy is, are we going to have sex tonight? Yeah. And she's like, "Uh, not tonight. Not Uh, again. Not again. She never says yes in the sitcoms. Now, I will say, they did say yes in the sitcoms even the Cosbys, they had a great sex life. Like, it was even 20, how long ago would that have been? 20, 30 years ago, it was still okay for the man to be the man, for the sex to be active, you know. And then at some point, things. men became joke, jokers. The, yeah. yeah. The, Overweight buffoons. Right. You know. The joke, the, the butt of the joke. The butt of the joke. That's exactly it. And that's social programming. Right. You know. That sucks. And it carries over. And what, but you already saw married guys would shit on the idea of marriage because when they didn't ma- manage theirs well, yeah, and it looked like shit, and they want everybody else's to look like shit too, you know, yeah, and anything that's an anomaly, and the guy's like happily married and fucking every day, they think is he's either lying, yeah, or it's an anomaly, or he's lying. You know, I mean, he's it really just, comes down to that. He's just lying. He's got to be lying. You know, you know he bullshits about everything. Yeah. Number two, and I think this is a large thing because we're in fitness and we see this, and it's gotten worse in the last 10 years, is guys' physical deterioration. Yeah. It doesn't take long because, you know, your average guy, again, you don't have to be a part of my 600-pound life. You had 30, 50 pounds extra. Yeah. And shit stops working well. Because you're carrying all this extra weight. And for most guys where they go, well, I, I probably got an extra 50 pounds. They got 100 pounds to lose. Yeah. It's a lot more than you think. If a girl thinks she has 20 pounds to lose, she has 50 pounds to lose. Exactly. If a guy thinks he has 50 pounds to lose, he has 100. 100 pounds to lose. And it's then the just the guys the that have 100, you can just tell they're just like twice the size. But that extra weight, the lack of physical activity, yeah, the lack of exercise, the lack of discipline, the lack of decent nutrition yeah causes you to your sex drive to plummet the dick doesn't work even on guys that are like 30 35 right this is not normal right you know i mean it doesn't work and because God. they're 50 or 100 pounds overweight and they eat fast food or roller hot dogs out of qt oh gosh. every day the, you know people think there's no i mean these people aren't having sex because their bodies won't do it Right. You know. And the drive just genuinely it's isn't not there. there. No. And and it's it's a natural response because you know, what does nature want to reproduce? Healthy specimens of your species. Good point. And if you're a not a healthy specimen of your species, you're not going to be in the state that you can replicate. Good you know? point. And it's it's hardwired. Yeah. Um it's why you don't you know, overweight women are not attractive. For marriage or for for childbearing. Reproduction, yeah. Because it's high risk, low reward. Oh, I've been reading yeah. the best book. It's called Deep Nutrition. And it's all about 
this genetic heritage that we that we pass along to our children, to our grandchildren, and beyond by the choices that we make and and the benefits that we can see from the choices that our ancestors would make. It's amazing. So a lot of this stuff runs deeper than what you just see on the surface. Good point. The physical deterioration early is a big factor. Huge. Because most guys that are physically fit will tend to have a higher sex drive and will actively pursue ways of keeping the sex life alive. Per, yeah, Does that make sense? Sure. You don't see, you don't hear that. You don't hear the, well, you're going to get married. I guess you won't be fucking much. You don't hear that at the gym much. No, that's a good you got point. All these guys that are like, "Well, you're gonna have to fuck one chick." <laughs> yeah, good luck. That's the problem. Good luck. How are that you gonna do that? You know, just one. You know, a lot. Yeah. And that's that's a different problem. You're a different challenge. Yeah. You know? That's true. And then the third thing is what I call she's a cunt because <laughs> so unique. It's quite often in a marriage, the animosity becomes such a point where. You don't even like this person. It right. may be for a season. It may be permanent. But it's hard to have sex with someone you don't even want to be in the room with them. Yeah. You know, and it takes That's time nice. for something to deteriorate like that or a single instance of disrespect. Some guys will just shut off. That's true. You know, but if she's gaining weight, it's natural for your eye not to pick up any sexual stimulus. Mm -hmm. If she's being bitchy, it's normal for you to avoid any contact with her. Right. If she's not attractive yeah, because of the way she's taking care of her or not taking care of herself or not dressing or not managing the household well. Right. You don't want to have any close contact. There's with not her. attraction. There. No, there's no attraction. There's no reason. So as a guy, that's why you have to run your shit. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's where the relationship management, the game... All of these, all of these aspects that we talk about on our podcast, that we talk about in our books, that we talk about in our newsletters, and that we shoot the shit about on Twitter, all play in to giving you the best bet for a great relationship and to avoid these kind of pitfalls. This is exactly the kind of stuff we want you to avoid because, as you know, and I know it's a running joke, but it's absolutely true, that you guys having sex for the rest of your lives, you know, and having a strong sex life is critical. And it's what differentiates, you know, a romantic relationship from any other relationship you have. So if you're a girlfriend or or married or whatnot, and you're not having the sex that you want, that's probably poor relationship management on your part. You need to kind of back up a few steps you need to get your shit together and you need to take back control because if you're not having sex, you might as well just be roommates. So this is not, this was not part, we've talked about this before, but this didn't come up. But this is the, the final note is if you bought into, you know, initially and allowed your, your sex life to die. Yeah. If you're in bad physical condition and your wife is being a cunt, the best thing you can do is instill dread into the relationship. Absolutely. It either... Is going to get her hamster going. You're going to be in a better place in six months or a year, or she'll nuke it, and that's fine because it needs to be nuked. Yeah, because if you're if she doesn't respect yeah. you and is she'll actively be pursuing yeah. disrespect. Yeah, and dread basically comes down to you learning game. Yeah, which is learn charisma, all the components of game, and putting them into play on your wife. Mm -hmm. She won't know what the fuck is going on initially, but she won't have any choice but to respond. Right. Because girls respond to this naturally. They can't help themselves. Yeah. Um, two, you have to get yourself into better shape mm -hmm. physically. This does two things. You start feeling better. Uh, two, you're not at home. And three, she starts wondering what the fuck is up. Yeah. And you know? you're gaining confidence. You can't not gain confidence as you train yeah. your muscles. And then... The third thing is it tends to start changing her. She starts changing her behavior. You can't go direct with her about this. No. Dread has to be unconscious or subconscious, and it's a culmination of you learning game over time, you instilling dread in her that you're going to possibly wander off. Right. You want to, Okay, you're, let's say you're going to go on a business trip or you're going to go to your high school reunion, but oh. she's got to stay back with her kids. Every guy that ended up at the high school reunion... Without their wife because she had to stay. 
said, I have never been fucked so hard in my life. When I, I got did. back. No, when they before they left. Oh. They didn't want them wandering oh, off. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. I remember going, well, no shit. That's awesome. <laughs> I had no idea any of this, you know, mattered yet. That's awesome. I was like, that's great. Yeah, but I kept hearing the story over and over. It's too consistent. Exactly. They know. They don't want their guy wandering off. Yeah. Into greener fields, you yeah. know. And you're working out, you're toying with her, you're you're showing him use mastery, you're, you're joking with her, her. you're teasing you know, her, not you're, taking her you're seriously. You're not showing up, you know, she's like, you need to be home by five and you're walking in the door at six. Yeah. You know, you just... Not apologetic. No. You're ready for dinner. These things add up psychologically. It's kind of like hitting something with a hammer over and over. It'll exactly. eventually snap. Um, and... Most of it is just the whole culmination of all of it together. Right. You can't do one without the other. It's true. You know, you kind of have to improve yourself physically and mentally and learn game at the same time. Um, and it all works to moving her back into that where she's chasing you around. I love it. You know. I love it. What do we say? I mean, it turns her from bitchy to like worried that you're going to fuck around. Yeah. They'll work hard. It's a win. Yeah. You can't beat that. No. That's the winning combination right there. So I will say, you know, with all of that in mind, just please don't lose heart if you are married or if you're married in a non-ideal situation or in a relationship of, of some long-term, you know, consequence. It can be turned around. You don't, have to, you don't have to ditch the relationship and start from scratch to have a wonderful, successful relationship. And we'll convey, we are not... Marriage counselors. No. But we are good at creating attraction yes. from the opposite sex. And if we can create more attraction, you can. we can teach you how to create more attraction from your wife, you win. Yeah. You Absolutely. And, she'll, and, you know, you can take her along with you to the gym. Get her into shape. You know? Yeah. You're, and a lot of guys say, thanks for getting my wife into shape. It's like sleeping with a new person. It goes you know? a long I mean, you're way. Like, you're welcome. You know, <laughs> we're just going to keep that between us. That's pretty good. Yeah, she doesn't need to know that. Yeah, so definitely I suggest picking up that dread book. Uh, it's, <coughs> it's The link is in the comments below. Uh, the the self-confidence, the instant self-confidence book that I've got down there is also a, a two-part punch here with uh, what he's talking about and just building that confidence, building the fitness, building the the dread, and just working it all together in your favor. So uh, we want you to win. Sign up for our newsletters. Keep listening. We appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Bye!